Now this is the account of the first city of men and of kingship on earth, and how Marduk to build a tower schemed, and wherefore Inanna the Mees stole. In the first region, in the lands of Eden, in, in the cities with precincts, by the Anunnaki lords, the earthlings, handiworks, and crafts were taught. Before long were the fields irrigated, on canal and river boats soon sailed. The sheepfolds and granaries were overflowing, prosperity the land filled. Ki Ingi, land of the lofty watchers, the first region was called. Then, to let the black-headed people a city of their own possess, it was decided. Kishi, scepter city, it was called. In Kishi did the kingship of man begin. Therein, in consecrated soil, Anu and Enlil, the heavenly bright object, implanted. In it, Ninurta, the first king appointed, mighty man was his royal title. To make it a center for civilized mankind, Ninurta to Iridu journeyed. The Mi tablets that for kingship divine formulas hold from Enki to obtain. Properly attired, with respect, Ninurta Iridu entered. For the me of kingship, he asked. Inki, the lord who all the me's safeguards, fifty me to Ninurta granted. In Kishi were the black-headed people with numbers to calculate taught. Heavenly Nisaba writing them taught. Heavenly Ninkashi beer making them showed. In Kishi, by Ninurta guided, kiln work and smithing proliferated. Wheeled wagons to male asses harnessed, craftily in Kishi first were fashioned. Laws of justice and righteous behavior in Kishi were promulgated. It was in Kishi that the people of hymns of praise to Ninurta composed. Of his heroic deeds and victories they sang, of his awe-inspiring black bird they chanted, how in faraway lands the bisons he subdued, how the white metal to mix with copper he found. Ninurta's glorious time it was. With the constellation of the archer he was honored. All the while, Inanna in Unigi, her lordship in the third region, awaited. All the while the domain of her own, of the leaders, she demanded. In the third region, after the second one will come, her leaders thus assured her. Having seen how Ninurta to Iridu journeyed, how the me of kingship he obtained, Inanna in her heart a plan devised to obtain me from Inki, she schemed. Her chambermaid, Ninshubar, to Iridu she dispatched, a visit by Inanna to announce. On this hearing, Inki to easy mood, his housemaster quickly instructions gave. The maiden all alone to my city Iridu her step is directing. When all alone she will arrive, my inner chambers let her enter. Pour for her cold water to freshen her heart. Barley cakes with butter give her. Sweet wine prepare. The beer vessels to the rim fill up. When Inanna alone, the abode of Inki entered, easy mood, Inki's commands followed. Then when Inki Inanna greeted by Inanna's beauty, he was overwhelmed. With jewelry was Inanna bedecked. By her thin dress, her body she revealed. When she bent down, her vulva by Inki was thoroughly admired. From the wine cup, sweet wine they drank. For beer drinking, a competition they had. Show me the me's, Inanna to Inki playfully said. Let me, me in my hand hold. Seven times in the course of the competition, Inki to Inanna, me's to hold, gave. The divine formulas for lordship and kingship, for priesthood and scribeship, for love dressing and for warring, Mies to Inanna, Inki to hold, gave. 
for music and singing, woodworking and metals and precious stone. Ninety-four mees that for civilized kingdoms are needed, Inky to Inanna gave. Holding her prizes tightly, Inanna from the slumbering Inky slipped away. To her boat of heaven she rushed out to soar away her pilot she instructed. When Inky from his slumber by Izzy Mood was awakened, Get hold of Inanna, to Izzy Mood, he said. When from Izzy Mood that Inanna had already in her boat of heaven departed, Inky heard, to chase Inanna and Inky's skyship, Izzy Mood, he instructed. All the me's you must retrieve to him, he said. At the approach of Unig Key, Izzy Mood, Inanna's boat of heaven intercepted. To return to Iridu and the wrath of Inky face, he made her. But when Inanna back to Iridu was brought, the Mies with her no more were. To her chambermaid, then Shuber she gave them, to the house of Anu in Unigki, then Shuber took them. In the name of my power, in the name of my father Anu, I command you, the Mies, to return. So did Inki angrily to Inanna say, in his abode captive he held her. When of this in Lil heard, to Iridu to face his brother he came. By right the Mies have I obtained. Inky himself in my hand placed them. So did Inanna to Enlil say. The truth of that Inky meekly admitted. When the time term of Kishi shall be completed, to Anuki kingship shall pass. So did Enlil declare. When Marduk all this did hear, greatly he was enraged. His anger no bounds knew. Enough has my humiliation been, to his father Inky, Marduk shouted. A sacred city of his own in the Eden, from Enlil he forthwith demanded. When Enlil to Marduk's appeal no heed paid, Marduk fate in his own hands grasps. To a place that for Anu's arrival... Before Anu Ki was selected, was considered Nabu, the Ajiji, and their offspring from their dispersal lands summoned. For Marduk, therein a sacred city, a place for sky ships to establish. When his followers at the place assembled, stones to build with, they found not Marduk how to make bricks and burn them by fire, to serve as stone to them he showed. Therewith a tower whose head the heavens can reach they were building. To thwart the plan in Lil to the place hurried, to placate Marduk with soothing words he tried. To stop Marduk and Nabu in their endeavor in Lil did not succeed. In Nubiru Ki in Lil his sons and grandchildren assembled, what to do they all considered. Marduk an unpermitted gateway to heaven is building, to earthlings it he is entrusting, so did Enlil to his sons and grandchildren say. If this we allow to happen, no other matter of mankind shall be unreached. This evil plan must be stopped, Ninurta said. All with that agreed. It was night time when from Nibiruki the Enlilite Anunnaki came. From their skyships havoc upon the rising tower, fire and brimstone they rained. To the tower and the whole encampment a complete end they made. To scatter abroad the leader and his followers in Lil thereupon decided. Henceforth their counsels to confuse, their unity to shatter, in Lil decreed. Until now... All the earthlings one language had, in a single tongue they speak. Henceforth their language I shall confound, that e they each other's speech will not understand. In the three hundred and tenth year, since the count of earth years began, did all this happen. In each region, in every land, the people a different tongue he made to speak. A different form of writing thereafter to each was given, that one the other will not comprehend. Twenty-three kings did in Kishi reign, for four hundred and eight years was it the scepter city. It was also in Kishi that a beloved king, Itana, for a heavenly journey was taken. 
At the allotted time, let kingship to Unig Ki be transferred, so did Enlil decree. To its soil the heavenly bright object from Kishi was transferred. When the decision to the people was announced, to Inanna an exaltation hymn they sang. Lady of the Mies, queen, brightly resplendent, righteous in radiance clothed, of heaven and earth beloved, by the love of An you consecrated, great adorations wearing. Seven times the Mies she obtained, in her hand she them is holding. For the tiara of kingship they are appropriate, for high priesthood suitable. Lady of the great Mies, of them she is the guardian. In the four hundredth and ninth year, after the count of earth years began, kingship in the first region to Unigki was transferred. Its first king was the high priest of the Iana temple abode, a son of Utu he was. As for Marduk, to the land of the two narrows he went. To be the master of the second region, once established, he expected.